Allie. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a spooky start to your day. I'm here today with another Halloween DIY video on my channel, but before we get into that, I would like to take a moment to personally thank each and every single one of you for bringing me to 100,000 subscribers on my channel. Like, what? I am literally speechless. There are just zero words. I don't even know what to say. I am just so, so beyond grateful. This is a milestone that I never, ever thought that I would reach on my channel. And now that I have made it to this point, again, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It is all obviously because of you guys. So thank you for all your love. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for all your positivity. And thank you for just making me so happy every single time I log on to YouTube. It seriously means everything to me. So thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Now on to this video. I am here with my second DIY Halloween video. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple more crafts. Some are spooky and some are cute. They are all inspired by Pinterest, and of course, they are all very cheap and easy to make. If you have any other questions or concerns, just ask them in the comments below. I will link my previous video in the description below if you're interested in checking that one out as well. And without further ado, we're gonna get right into this video. To make this candy corn candy bowl, you're going to need to start off with a flower pot as well as a flower pot holder. Take it out into a well ventilated area and start spray painting it whatever color you would like your candy holder to be. I am spray painting mine black because I am going for the true Halloween spirit. Allow both of these pieces to dry completely before moving on to step two. Mine took about a half hour. Next you want to hot glue on a handle. I'm just using a ping pong ball that I spray painted black and I just made sure I used a generous amount of glue so that it would all stick in place and be very very secure. Then you want to move on to your bowl. I couldn't find any glass bowls so I went to Michael's and they actually already have snow globes out. That is shocking because it's only October. But yeah, I'm just using a large snow globe and I just cut the top off and now I'm just hot gluing that glass bowl or that plastic bowl, whatever you're using, right to the top of the flower pot. You can be done after the previous step, but I wanted to add just a little something extra to make it pop just a little bit more. So I'm just using this orange glitter ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm hot gluing it right around the perimeter of my candy bowl, and I'm just making a little X right into the center. Then I took two smaller strips of the orange glitter ribbon and I'm just kind of hot gluing it right into the center and then folding both of the pieces in. This is going to act as a bow in the center of my candy bowl. Once I was done adding on that glitter ribbon bow to the center, I just added a plastic spider also bought at the Dollar Tree. I got about 50 of these for only a single dollar. And again, I just placed this right into the center to kind of bring the entire project together. And finally, pour in the candy corn and you are good to go. And this is what my final candy bowl looks like. I am obsessing over the colors. I think it is just so, so beautiful. If you are not a fan of candy corn, you can add any type of candy in here. It doesn't specifically have to be candy corn. I just think that the candy corn looks really nice with the color scheme. I believe this cost me about $6 to make. It is extremely easy, extremely cheap, and most importantly, a lot of fun to make. Now 
Now onto the easiest, and I mean easiest craft of this entire video, the no sew, no hassle fabric pillows. All you're going to need to do is go to a store that sells Halloween inspired fabric and buy about a yard of it. Then you want to cut that yard of fabric into some long rectangles, larger rectangles if you want bigger pillows, and smaller rectangles if you want tinier pillows. Then you want to take the fabric side up and take some fabric glue and start gluing along the perimeter of the rectangle, making sure to leave the bottom section free so you can pull the fabric through afterwards. Fold the other half of your rectangle over, making sure again that your fabric is on the inside. Then take your fingers and smooth down the glue. This is very, very important so that the glue is touching each other and it really, really ends up drying very, very secure. Then allow this to dry for at least an hour, maybe even up to two hours or until the glue is completely hardened. When the glue has completely hardened, fold your pillow inside out and now you should have the design on the outside and you should also have very smooth edges. Stuff your pillow. You can either use an old pillow that you have, and if you don't have an old pillow, you can use some polyfill. I have these really old, ugly, dingy looking pillows that I just kind of want to get rid of, so I decided to just put that right inside of the pillow and kind of repurpose it. But again, if you don't have a pillow laying around, you can always use polyfill. I ended up taking some polyfill and adding it inside just to fluff it out just a little bit more. And the final step is to close up that opening that is on the bottom of your pillow. To do this, I just folded the fabric in, and then I took a hot glue gun. I hot glued the center of it. I like to do the center first because I feel like it makes it easier to work with. Pressed it down, held it in place for about 30 seconds or until the glue hardened, and then I worked on the outer corners. And this is what my final no sew, no hassle fabric pillow looks like. This craft is extremely effortless and extremely inexpensive. I bought my yard of fabric at Joann's for only $8 and I was able to make three very large pillows out of it. In my personal opinion, I feel like most stores overprice pillows like crazy. Usually they're anywhere between like $15 to sometimes $20 for one single pillow. Again, I made three of these pillows for only $8. Of course I had to add the pillow in and the stuffing, but those are things that I already had at my house and most people already have at their house as well. So I highly suggest giving this one a shot. It is a really great addition to your house. To make these standalone ghosts, you're going to need two parts of Mod Podge for every one part of water. So I ended up using two cups of Mod Podge, one cup of water. I added in one cup of Mod Podge, then a cup of water, the next cup of Mod Podge, and I mixed it all together with a spoon. To assemble a stand, you're going to need a 2 liter cup of Sprite or any bottle and you're also going to need a blown up balloon and you want to tape it together. Then you want to take a piece of cloth or some cheesecloth. I found that the cheesecloth definitely worked the best and I got it on Amazon for about $3. Stick it right into the Mod Podge and water mixture, soak it all up and then start squeezing the excess Mod Podge and water right out of the cloth. Place the cloth over the balloon and that's pretty much all there is to this craft. Now all you want to do is wait about 2-3 to three hours for the Mod Podge to dry and harden and for your cheesecloth or your cloth to get very very stiff. Once you notice that your ghost is stiff, just take a pointy object, poke at the balloon, let it deflate, and then take the bottle straight out from underneath the ghost, and it should be standing on its own. This is what my spooky little standalone ghost looks like when it is complete, and I am obsessed with it. You can always add some black eyes right into the middle, but I kind of like the way it looks just like this.
Next up are the Illuminating Boo Mason Jars. All you're going to need are three separate mason jars as well as a duct tape sheet. You can get a duct tape sheet at Joann's Fabric. Take your mason jar, place it right on top of the sheet, and start sketching out your letters. I did this on top of the sheet so I could make sure that the letters were not larger or too small for my mason jar. Once all of your letters are sketched out and you're happy with the way that they look, just take a pair of scissors and cut them out. Take the backing off of each individual letter and place them on your mason jars. Now onto my favorite part of this craft, spray painting your mason jars with some frosted glass spray paint. Take your mason jars into a well ventilated area, flip them over so that the bottom side is up, and get spraying. When the jars have completely dry, start to peel off the duct tape sheet or the duct tape letters and you should be left with a very, very clear section where it says B-O-N-O. -O. To decorate your mason jars, just add some ribbon to the top. I bought all my ribbon at the Dollar Tree. I added just a little dollop of hot glue to the back of the mason jars, added some ribbon, wrapped it all the way around, and then hot glued the remaining section so it would stay secure in place. And to add just a little more spookiness to these jars, I'm taking those same sex spiders that I used in the first craft and I am just hot gluing them on to the mason jars. I added two spiders per jar. Find a fun spot in your house to display your jars, then take these fake flickering lights, place them in the center, and you are done. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you enjoy my videos. I hope you're having a spooky day and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.